Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 39 of Caspi Road to Exploration, and today we start with um, an Ares 1 launch which is bound for the Hermes Station to pick up the guy we saved last time, the, uh, the, yeah, just a guy in space, and also a little bit of science, I think. But yeah, when we get him back, we'll get uh, about a hundred grand or something. So yes, just our standard vehicle um, going up to space. Yeah, I do need to replace this at some point, because, well, it, it works fine, and I designed the Ares 2, the Ares 3, the kind of Dragon 2 Type 1. Um, when I needed a bigger crew capacity, which I didn't really need anymore. So I might actually just end up building an SSTO. <laughs> it's almost episode 40 and I still haven't built an SSTO because... Well, SSTOs are good because they're super reusable, but rockets are good because they lift lots of uh, payload easily and are easy to bring back, and my rockets are also reusable. So I'm not sure how much use there is for SSTOs, but they are quite cool. Um, and probably slightly more reusable. Anyway, uh, talking of reusability, there's the first stage coming back to land on the ocean rather beautifully. Um, and yeah, we're just going to get into uh, an intersect with the station, um, which we'll do with the monopropellant engines, uh, which is, yeah, final, though we're in a bit of a slightly skew F orbit, which is kind of annoying. So if we tweak a little bit, um, we'll be able to get it. Just I think we've burned too much now, so if we do a retrograde burn, we should be fine. And we do all of that, and you know what it looks like, because I've done probably about a hundred of these uh, Ares 1 launches, and it definitely launches to the station. So here we are, just docked onto the Hermes, um, and we'll... Well, firstly, we're going to transmit some science, because we have like 150 science just in the lab, sitting around. Uh, yeah, it generates really fast. Um, and then we're going to get the science report and the Kerbal here into the Ares 1, so that he can go home. Um, and we can get our money. And yeah, before we do that, we need to bring back the second stage, which is uh, rather trivial. Here we are just deorbiting, and uh, a beautiful descent with the sunrise, which I captured. I thought that looked really great. And the landing on the, uh, well, sun-stricken ocean. Anyway, after transferring all of the food and, well, all of the life support as well, which we're doing a pretty good job of getting a lot of life support and stuff in there, we decide to depart because um, not, none of the other Kerbals need to come home right now. They're all, uh, well, very useful. Um, so here we are, just uh, deorbiting the spacecraft and landing on the ocean. Yes, just a pretty simple mission, so yeah. And we get our 10 grand back for, for the capsule, uh, get our Alfred Kerman, of course, um, and 100,000 for rescuing him, which isn't bad, we're doing alright for money now. But anyway, here we are at Moho, and I'd like to make an apology, um, while recording the first bit of the Moho mission, which was basically an inclination change and the first part of the descent, my computer crashed so that it could do some uh, Windows 10 updates, so I lost a bit of that footage. But it was pretty much just uh, using the second stage of the rocket to do an inclination change right next to Moho, and then doing some of the slowdown maneuver. So you can see we've probably done about 1500 meters per second of it right here already, so we have just about 2500 meters per second burn. But yes, using those arc jet thrusters, we will be slowing down around Moho, and most of the video today will be focused on that, because, um, well, focused on the Moho mission, because we've got a lot of objectives there. And it's quite tricky, this mission, actually, be mostly because of Delta V requirements. Um, uh, because we will be getting into orbit, but only just. Uh, well, not only just, we do have a bit of a margin, but you'll see that in a bit. But yes, uh, Moho is a bit temperamental because it's in such an inclined orbit. Uh, sometimes you'll come in and it'll take maybe three kilometers of, uh, per second of del three kilometers a second of delta V to slow down, and sometimes it'll take uh, like six. So yeah, luckily it wasn't too bad for us, and we had a lot of delta V anyway because we're using arc jet thrusters, and we can use them at full thrust as we're right down near the sun. Um, yeah, so it actually worked out pretty well, and I keep turning off the engine and getting a little closer because obviously as you slow down, your time to parry out drops quite a lot. But anyway, yes, you can see the beauty of Moho right there as we start to distort our orbit in a circular way so that maybe we will um, stay in orbit of Moho. Uh, but yeah, you can see there's a bunch of temperature reports um, just above the surface there, which we'll be trying to get at least one of because it's a very, very high paying mission, about a quarter of a million per mission and there's two of them so it wouldn't be bad to get both but uh we might not be able to because you can see we've got 400 meters of second oh we got a world first for about 40 grand for orbiting moho uh yes this is the first time we've orbited moho even though this is our third mission to moho um but the first one was just a flyby anyway the second one was an accidental flyby <laughs> uh yes but we start getting our science that we haven't got from around uh moho because we have missed some of it um uh, but yeah um, so let's uh, move on up. We've got 400 meters per second of delta V left, so we're going to try and circularize our orbit a bit. Um, well, actually, circularize it fully, which is probably stupid because 
Uh, I need to do a bunch of inclination changes. Um, I just wasn't really thinking. Uh, so I probably wasted a lot of uh, Delta V like this, but uh, well, it's fine. Um, so yes, you can see with 267 meters per second, we will be able to slow down into a pretty circular orbit, a uh, nice low orbit, which will be nice, and that'll leave us a little bit of fuel left for doing other things, which uh, should be good. And obviously we will be landing at some point with the lander, which has a significant amount of Delta V in it, although it has, it, you can see in the Delta V reader, it has about 1,200, but with the antenna on it, it's more like 600. So any maneuvers we do with that could greatly, uh, well, causes a lot of problems, basically. Um, because we'll lose a lot of fuel. Uh, but yes, there we are in a nice orbit of MOHO, and I decided actually pretty much just to leave it and wait for MOHO to orbit, uh, to rotate a bit until the temperature scans came into my um, orbital path, because you can see the um, delta, the uh, inclination changes are quite hefty. Um, but the problem with that is MOHO takes, I think it's like 50 days or something to rotate, and I didn't really want to wait that long, so you can see I've actually planned a maneuver, and it's not that bad. Um, if I do a bit of a, um, uh, if I do a bit of a, a prograde burn, <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't think of prograde burn, because the further you are away from the body, the more efficient uh, inclination changes are. But anyway, while I wait for that to rotate and ultimately give up, we have a few things to do on the station. Firstly, uh, bringing back the um, fueling spacecraft, because we need that back because of the money, and also because we want that bottom docking port. We do lose the bottom fuel tank, but it's fine. I mean, that's going to cost us a little money, but we've got quite a lot of money now. But anyway, here we are with a Pulsar 4 bound for the station. Yes, I freed up that bottom docking port so that I can put a new module on it. Um, you may uh, remember that I, uh, well, the Ares 4, now my big kind of nu nuclear engine kind of powered spacecraft, um, only uses liquid fuel because it's using a nuclear engine. Um, uh, so I'm going to put up a liquid fuel module with no oxidizer because I have a bunch of leftover oxidizer in the tanks on the Hermes, which is kind of kind of annoying because it means I have a bunch of fuel I can't really use. So I am going to start just sending up liquid fuel um, missions without the oxidizer, and then obviously sometimes send up both. Uh, but yes, anyway, uh, our beautiful big rocket. Um, at the end of this episode, hopefully, hopefully we'll be upgrading the uh, launch pad so that I can build bigger rockets and uh, taller rockets so I can send stuff like my rover to the moon because I just need a bigger module for the, a bigger, um, oh well, taller launch requirement for that. Um, so yeah, I've got, this is also mostly fueled actually, um, so that's, well, pretty good because that means we get, we are going to have, it's also basically like a fueling mission. But anyway, here we are just landing the first stage rather... Well, rather aggressively, but that's fine. It slows down within 100 meters of the ocean, and then we just gently put it on the ocean at about 5 meters per second. Um, and, well, actually 4, that's really gentle landing, and we get about 24,000 funds back for that. But here we are, just uh, pushing our way into orbit, and you can see it now. It looks a lot like the other fuel tanks on the station, the kind of three 1.25 meter parts. Um, but yeah, again, we're in a bit of a skew if orbit, but after a little planning, I get my encounter here, as you can see. Um, and after doing all of that bow, and here we are just go, um, coming into the Hermes. I do usually cut through these maneuvers into the Hermes now, just because I do them so frequently. Um, but yes, there we are. The beautiful Hermes, now getting a bigger, mo another module getting even bigger. So now it can uh, store, well, more liquid fuel than oxidizer, because we don't need to, well, we need to store more for liquid fuel than we do oxidizer. So yeah. I'm just going to maneuver this in. I used the second stage all the way here, and the second stage will also bring back the little um, probe and reaction wheel and things. I realize I don't actually have to add that probe because it's not decoupling. Um, there's a probe inside the second stage because obviously all of my stages are basically sp uh, spacecraft in their own right. Um, but yes, there we go. We'll deploy the um, radiators, and that'll look rather nice. And then we'll bring back the second stage uh, after, well, after transmitting another 300 science, because I did actually skip a launch um, on the way down to MOHO, because I just had nothing to launch, um, and I really wanted to get to the MOHO mission, so yeah, we had quite a lot of science build up. Um, so yes, let's bring back the second stage, since these cost quite a lot of money. <laughs> um, and I have a lot of fuel left over, so I can be rather precise on my landing. Here we are just deorbiting. The solar panels will explode, because I forgot to put on the retractable, uh, retractable solar panels, um, which is kind of dumb. Uh, but yes, and here we are landing, and when I pull the chutes, they're actually ordered wrong. I pull them both at the same time, and the main chutes don't deploy, they break. Um, because of the high dynamic pressure, because the drogue chutes are supposed to pull first. So here we are just going down to landing. So I'm going to have to land on fuel. Um, and I do this, here's one time to time accelerate. The first time I do it, I almost kind of 
totally, I go upward too much, and then I decide to just hover slam, that's basically where you stop, and then just fall into the ocean. And we get about 15,000 back for that, and you can see we've got about 800,000 funds up at the top there, so not bad. But anyway, back around Moho, I've made my executive decision, um, <laughs> executive, I don't know, uh, to do my inclination change and go and see them. I didn't actually end up doing a prograde burn to put myself in a higher orbit to do that, because I'm going to have to burn off that energy anyway when I land, so it doesn't actually work out any more efficient. So anyway, here we are, because the time warp takes so long because I'm in such a low orbit, um, I just cut through that. But here we are just doing our inclination change. But the problem is we kind of have to do it on the dark side of the planet for it to be more efficient. But these are electric, uh, like semi-electric driven engines. So I can only do very small burns on each time. So here we are coming around again. And to do another one, because I have to do it in quite a few phases. But that looks like I'm pretty well on course for it. It did use all of my electric charge, but that's fine. It'll power up when we... Uh, come back around and we'll get communications back. Um, so yes, now we're going to fly through that and take our temperature report and then we're going to have to use pretty much all of the rest of this Delta V to get into the other one. So we are only really going to be able to do one temperature report. Um, so yes, I logged the temperature but because of the 30 second uh, signal delay I actually um, didn't get that because I flew through the um, through the uh, the the, the the zone too quickly. Um, so this time I set up a maneuver about 30 seconds early and take the report. Uh, so that uh, so that well, I set up the maneuver so I can see when I'm 30 seconds away, and then take the report. And I actually did get that there. So yes, now we just need to do another inclination change, which will be a little more than um, the delta v in the arc jet thruster in the arc jet stage. So we're gonna basically um, uh, we're gonna use their liquid fuel engine, but we don't have a lot of time actually because that uh, the even though a moho rotates quite slowly. Um, that is slipping into darkness, which is kind of a problem because we will lose our electric charge on the dark side of the planet by the time we come around. Um, and we won't be able to communicate, which is kind of a problem. So I decided to do uh, my most of uh, my arc, the burn with my arc jet thrusters on the light side of the planet uh, here so that I can, uh, well, so that I can do the whole burn in one and then I'll do the rest of the inclination change with the liquid fuel engine on the other side of the planet uh, because that doesn't require electric charge and then we'll come around in time so yes a bit of a problematic mission but we have uh, we we do solve problems so i'm just getting all of the electric charge into the um batteries that aren't going to be decoupled and then i'm going to de decouple the bottom stage and we will be left with just the lander and the orbiter the orbiter is just a communications device which will be um decoupled before landing to save Delta V because I couldn't have brought that to the surface because I would have needed to bring more fuel on the lander and then more fuel on all of the other stages which basically results in uh, just not really being able to do this. So I do my maneuver trick again where I set up the maneuver 30, uh, so that I can see when I'm 30 seconds away and then I'll take the report. Um, as you can see in the top left I have a 30 second signal delay. So yes, anyway, here we are, we'll be flying through it momentarily and we will be completing the most profitable part of this mission, and then we will go in for a landing. Um, uh, yes, you can see I'm entering it now, and just getting the report. Yeah, no science that I can transmit back, but if we go up to the top there, we find our mission, 236,000 plus 36,000, plus another 36,000 for the other one. That's a pretty profitable mission now. Um, I probably could have gotten those other temperature reports now looking at it, but I think they were a little bit off. So anyway, I actually decide to land right now, because... I can't do my deal with burn on the other side, and I need my communications device to be as close as possible. So I'm just going to basically slow down right now, because I don't need to do a um, deal with burn. I can just do my landing burn all in one. So I'm going to leave that there and hope that it stays above the horizon for long enough for me to land, because, um, well, if it doesn't, I'm rather screwed. And I'm just going to check on it and make sure it is getting electric charge, and that's all good. So yes, that will allow, because I don't have a long enough communication device to communicate back. Oh, we got a world first for um, suborbital trajectory, that's good. But anyway, um, yeah, because I don't have a long enough, a long range enough communication device on the lander to communicate with Kerbin, I need to leave the orbiter in orbit. Like I said, there just is, wasn't really enough uh, delta V to land. Uh, but because it's in such a low orbit, I have a really small time frame to land and transmit data. So it is going to be a little tricky, but um, this was the only real way of doing it. But it looks like I am um, on a pretty good trajectory for landing. And it is still in, uh, in, in, in sight, I think. Um, but it's slipping over the horizon. I'm kind of freaking out. Um, so I decide to slow down a little more uh, um, early so that uh, if I do lose communications, I will just 
slam into the ground kind of hard, but hopefully something will survive. But I'm getting pretty close to the ground now, and I actually do manage to touch down without losing communications. So yes, this has just worked, and when we look at the map view um, in a second, you'll see how close we were to losing communications. But yes, that is us down on Moho. And yeah, you can see that it's actually transmitting through the planet currently. It was probably a few seconds away from dropping our signal. So that's pretty lucky. But yes, this is our first landing on another planet. I know it's weird that it's Moho first, and it's weird that it's taken 39 episodes, but whatever. Um, and there's another 40 grand for the world first. Not bad at all. I mean, you can see in the sky right there, uh, this is distant object enhancement that allows you to see things from far away, and you, you've got the little blue speck down there, that's Kerbin. The purple one's Eve, and the red one's Duna, and you can actually, if you look at that again, you can see there's a little um, grey speck next to um, Kerbin. That's, you can see the moon from here, and you can see in the map view those are what that is. And if you look very carefully, and I think probably have at least a 720p screen, um, you can just about make out the tiny speck of um, Gilly next to um, Eve. Uh, and you, if you look very closely there, you might have been able to see Jewel as well. Visual, uh, distant object enhancement, awesome mod. Anyway, so yes, I'm going to take all of my science now that I have communications back. I was just looking at that while waiting for the um, uh, the orbiter to come back around. So I'm going to start communicating, well, sending this back through the orbiter to um, Kerbin. Um, and yeah, I think this is how most, uh, a lot of... I'm not sure in real life if this is how they do it. I know a lot of the communications around Mars is using kind of old probes, um, but I think that might just be so you can communicate more frequently. But I'm not entirely sure, actually. But yes, so you can see it flying overhead there, and you can actually see it um, with the visual object and a distant object enhancement. Um, not quite there, but yeah. Anyway, so we get most of the science transmitted, but some of it doesn't because we run out of electric charge. So I start logging a bunch of other ones because I'm not sure what didn't get transmitted back. So um, you can see the gravity scan didn't actually get transmitted and the seismic scan, but it runs out of electric charge again. I managed to send the gravity scan, but the seismic scan I try and send again, uh, but it fails again because I briefly lose communications. I think it's an electric charge thing. But luckily when the orbiter comes back around, I do indeed manage to send the data back. Um, so yes, very successful mission. It went rather well. I would have liked to get a other temperature scan, but well, things happen. But yes, we now have about 1.2 million funds and our first uh, first lander on another planet. There will be another one next episode, um, actually, which will, well, let's say it's Duna. We're going to go land on Duna next episode, which will be really cool. But yes, and with that money, we'll upgrade our launch pad so that we have no height or um, weight limitations. So that's rather wonderful. We'll be able to launch the moon rover next time and also land on Duna. So that will be rather amazing. I hope you will come back for that episode. I hope you've enjoyed this and all the moho shenanigans which finally went well. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.